Are the people who stay in hotels for long periods of time residents or guests? The state of New Jersey is trying to figure that out. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it's coming out of the state of New Jersey. So it has to do with basically people who stay in these extended stay hotels for long periods of time. Now, as I noticed, <laughs> there are a lot of people who are kind of, you know, transient, who happen to stay in these extended stay hotels for sometimes months or longer. And really, the hotels are falling into the issue where they're going to have to go to eviction court to remove the people in some states because they're seen as tenants. OK, and the hotel is seen as a landlord, even though they are, you know, saying, oh, no, 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 no. This is a hotel. These people are temporary and, you know, they've got to go. So the big issue is they needed a definite definition in the state law that says, hey, these people, you know, this is what makes them qualify as a tenant. And you know what? Um, I, I agree with that, okay? And, you know, normally I'm talking bad about New Jersey, but this is actually a smart thing that they're doing. They're going through the process and they're saying, hey, hotels, this is what you need to do to make sure that the tenants or the, the, the guests remain guests, right? And this could also apply to somebody who's staying in an Airbnb. That's why I'm covering this article because if somebody is staying in an Airbnb and they're staying longer than a certain period of time, then you might have to go through the eviction process to remove them. And they remain a guest unless these certain qualifications are met. So yeah, this is a good thing for us landlords as well. And that that's, uh, you know, one of those things that you don't really think about a lot, but hey, you know, them trying to help these hotels out is actually going to help us as well. So before I get into the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. So in your state, how long does a person have to stay in a unit before they become considered a tenant rather than just a guest, like if it's a short-term rental. I'm just curious for those people out there who operate on Airbnb, etc. So, you know, uh, it's an interesting topic. Let's get into it. This article is coming from njspotlightnews.org and it says, trying to strike a balance between rights of hotel owners and homeless people. And that's kind of how they you know, uh, work out the whole thing. Oh, this is between homeless people who stay in extended hotel, stay, stay hotels and hotel owners, right? Well, you know, like I said, this is an issue between a guest and then a short-term rental owner. So anyway, let's get into it. During the COVID-19 pandemic, New Jersey famously adopted some of the strongest renter protections in the nation to fend off a mass wave of evictions and homelessness. In the summer of 2021, Governor Phil Murphy signed into law rules that protected and assisted renters who had been financially impacted by the pandemic, according to a news release from the governor's office, in part by extending a moratorium on evictions in some cases. An additional $500 million was allocated for rental assistance and $250 million for utility assistance. Yeah, the, the landlords up in New Jersey really got screwed by all that eviction moratorium nonsense. Remember, rental assistance only went to people who met certain income thresholds. That meant that a lot of people who qualified for the eviction moratorium did not qualify to get rental assistance. They just had to take those losses. <clears throat> In a nod to landlords, the legislation ensured that New Jersey's moratorium continued through August of that year for low-income residents with a mechanism to phase it out by the end of the year. And by 2023, more than 10,000 families each month across New Jersey received a notice that their landlord had filed for eviction. Now, state legislators are moving a controversial bill that aims to further help certain landlords still facing barriers, namely the owners of hundreds of hotels and motels who are seeing homeless families move in for lack of anywhere else to go. Yeah, <laughs> I don't consider hotel, even, you know, these extended stay hotels where people stay for months or even years, I don't consider them to be landlords, the owners like that, because, you know, it, it's a it's a completely different business model. I'll just say it like that. 
It's uh, more, like I said, it's more, much more similar to running a short-term rental than it is to running a traditional long-term rental property because there are no, you know, like tenant screening. There is none of that stuff, okay? And uh, let me continue because I'll explain more as we go through. Specifically, the bill would create a distinction between residential tenants and transient guests of a hotel or a motel to determine who is protected and who is not. And now, now they're going to start going through the details of the way that New Jersey wants to define a transient guest as, a po as opposed to a tenant, okay? And this stuff is, it's, it's pretty simple. I like that it's, uh, it has a very easy to follow definition and you know I, I wish that uh, more states would come up with something like this. So three months. The bar would be high. The bill would require people living in a hotel or motel to meet a multi-factor test to determine whether they are a tenant or a short-term guest before a property owner can evict them from a room. For a person to be considered a tenant they would need to have stayed for three consecutive months or longer in the same room and prove their intent to stay for a long period by changing their primary address on their driver's license to the hotel or motel's address, among other measures. Now keep that in mind, right? You have to have stayed in the same room for at least three months and change the address on your ID to the hotel's address, okay? So right there, you know, they're gonna knock out a lot of people who are claiming, oh yeah, well, you know what, I, I should have to go through the eviction process. Well, no, it says on your driver's license that you don't live here. So you're just a temporary guest, right? So maybe um, that that's a huge factor right there. The other thing, three months, you know, I know a lot of places are saying, well, if you stay anywhere for just one month, I think it's New York who says that, right? Then you are considered to be a tenant and then have to go through the eviction process to remove them. Well, fortunately, New Jersey says, no, 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 it's three months. So that makes it very, very flexible for a landlord or for a uh, hotel owner to be able to say, hey, uh, I at least have to move you to a different room. You can still stay at my hotel, but I'm gonna move you to a different room uh, before the three months comes up, right? And then they never qualify as officially a tenant. You don't have to go through the eviction process to get rid of them. So the reason I, I say that these people are uh, not tenants, right? Even no, no matter how long they stay somewhere is because you don't go through a regular tenant screening process with these people, okay? Uh, when it comes to somebody staying in a hotel, if they have the cash to be able to stay there for that night or for that week or whatever, right? They pay up front and they get to stay, right? There is no tenant screening, there's no credit check, there's no background check, there's no employment history, there's nothing. So essentially anyone can stay in a hotel, including convicted criminals, including, you know, uh, people who are on uh, offender registration lists. It doesn't matter as long as they pay. And, you know, I, I realize that this sort of housing is necessary. It's absolutely necessary because, you know, this is last place, you know, last resort housing, essentially, for people who can't find anywhere else to stay. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You know, uh, the little hotel room is usually like a small uh, studio. It's got a little kitchenette in it. It's got a shower and running water and air conditioning. And honest truth, that is perfect, okay? And if more cities, rather than trying to build this expensive, like I, I covered recently a story about Los Angeles, California, who spent like $165 million to build 278 units, apartment complex, right? And meanwhile, one of these extended stay hotels, you know, could ha easily have 278 units in it and cost a fraction of that amount, even in Los Angeles. So you understand that the most efficient way, the best use of money in order to get people housed might not necessarily be to build these expensive homeless shelters, you know? So yeah, uh, 
there's there's a lot of issues here, but I think the the main thing is that New Jersey is doing the right thing by clearly defining what they expect in order to be considered a tenant versus just a guest, right? <clears throat> So anyway, I'll put a link to this article in the description down below. Let me know what you think of this whole situation.